Welcome back to Business Rockstars. I'm Pat O'Brien. Thanks for joining us. Our guest, our rock star today is Jack Ryan. Good old Irishman, right? That's right. Ryan and O'Brien could be a terrible law firm. Or bad Broadway <laughs> team. Or... Bad Broadway team. Uh, the co-founder of Rex, which is Real Estate Exchange. So, Jack, how are you? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Nice to see you. What does Real Estate Exchange do? So, we're the digital alternative to the residential real estate agent. We do everything an agent would do, but for 20% of the cost, and we sell homes faster and with better results, uh, but much reduced from the 5 or 6% fee people are used to paying here in, in the Los Angeles And area. sometimes don't even know they pay it, to be honest with you. Well, on the buy side, it's hard to know because right. it's kind of hidden there, but it's a pretty big fee. And so we find buyers by find, going to the internet directly, finding them on, on the web directly through um, ways of putting out ads. Mm -hmm. And we see who hits on the ad digitally, where they live, what their demographics are, and we find other people just like those people who may want to see this home. So right. we go around the MLS, go around agents, go directly to people on the web. So it's basically technology marrying the real estate industry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We'll get to it in a minute. Uh, what was your first job? Working at the Orange Crush factory, turning over uh, bottles on an assembly line as it went through to pour syrup <laughs> inside the bottle. <laughs> Actually, I had a similar job. I worked at John Morell and Company, the meat packing. Oh, yeah. And I was a spam inspector. So every 500th can of spam, I would have to pick it up and make sure it was compressed and everything. Did you really eat it? Never eaten it in my oh, life. Oh, good. Just uh, I ate it once in South America, and they said it was a, a delicacy. <laughs> I said, believe me, it's not. Trust me on that. I can still remember the motion I did. I, I take the box, flip it like this, and pull it straight up, and the bottles will go down the assembly line. Can you still hear the bottles? Clang? Yes, yeah. I can, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, that's why they're our first jobs. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Um, did you Five always, bucks an hour I got, by uh, the way. That's pretty good, yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, did you always want to be an entrepreneur? No, it's kind of forced upon me. You know, I, I worked... Uh, at Goldman Sachs for a long time, and then I left to go teach high school in the south side of Chicago. And after you leave that business for a long time, it's hard to get back into it. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I started a media business, which has been done very well, and then I launched Rex. And what was the media business? It's called 22nd Century Media, so once again, we're, we're digital and physical, uh, aggregate of information for local towns and villages. So we have about 20 newspapers and websites across the U.S. Right. Um, Jack Ryan's our guest. It says here, well, I'm going to believe it because we talked about it. You worked in a refugee camp in South Texas. Yeah, so after I left... Somehow those four words, five, refugee camp in South Texas, sounds... Paradoxical? No. Um, Sounds interesting, I'll tell you. What was that all about? Well, so this was uh, in the mid-1980s when there were a lot of wars going on in Central America, right. and a lot of refugees were walking up through Mexico from Guatemala, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and coming across the border. And we'd greet them at the border and give them a place to stay and some food. And most of them could apply for political asylum because they were fleeing the communist aggression in Central America. So I worked there right out of um, Harvard Law School and Harvard Business School. What were you, sort of a uh, staging area for them? or? Yeah, we uh, pr pretty much, you know, it's a long walk. Um, so we would pretty <laughs> much, um, we would pretty much uh, give them a bed. They could mm -hmm. stay there for two or three weeks, help them find a job, and help them apply for asylum. Yeah. And what'd you get out of that job? What I get out of it? Yeah. Well, this is goes compassion, to, I would think. Yeah, but you have to have compassion to go there. I hope, and that's something I hope my parents instilled in me. I think they did. But um, that's part of what we do at Rex because after I left Goldman too, I went to teach high school in the South Side of Chicago, and we carry that through to Rex because for every twenty homes we sell, we um, build a home for someone who doesn't have one. And so that that social mission when I left graduate school, right. left S Goldman Sachs, stuck with you. now it's part of Rex. Uh, what's the uh, the culture at your office? Uh, We're going to talk more about the, your business in the next segment, but what's the culture there? You know, when I was in business school, I thought culture was the dumbest class in business school. We and I think it's the most important thing. Yeah. Um, and our culture is one of uh, teamwork, supportive, supporting each other, and then fast, fast, fast. In yeah. our business, you have to keep iterating, learning as fast as you can. So that's the primary culture, being supportive, uh, putting the consumer first, and going fast, fast, fast. And this whole idea of you can't make money on the Internet, I'm so tired of hearing that. Because the people that do the right things, if they connect the internet to something like real estate, you can make money, right? Yeah, I think- Or the, else you rented that suit. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for most people, um, they realize that the residential real estate business is dysfunctional. They're paying a lot of money, five or 6% for uh, services. For many, aren't that great. For some people, they do a really good, good job. Some agents do a very good job. Um, but for us, we, can make, we are making money and doing it for a lot less. 
And so for us, you can't make money on the web. Um, how, did, um, how did you come up with this? A uh, number of things in my background. Um, one is um, realizing the importance of markets mm -hmm. um, and applying the markets to uh, residential real estate. So when I applied to colleges out of um, high school, my mom told me I was really smart, but I applied to uh, eight schools and every one of them turned me down except for one. And that was the first time I really believed in markets because do I believe what my mom said about me or do I believe the seven people who in the cold light of day looked at my body of work and said, you're not qualified. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to Goldman Sachs, it was an application of markets to stocks. So um, when I started Goldman Sachs, uh, we charged 12 cents to trade a share, a share of stock. Uh, when I left, it was about a penny because markets started influencing right. the stock market as well. Right. Um, so anyway, so it's applying markets to residential real estate. How many people work for you now? 25 people. Why do you us. hire them? What cool. process is there? Well, we look at two things. One is competency and the second is culture. Because you spend most of your waking hours with people you work with, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that they fit well with us and we fit well with them. And the second thing is, are you good at the job you're being hired to do? Now, are they former real estate agents or? For the most part, they're not. Although all of our people become agents, but when they start, we try to bring the skill sets from other industries to real estate mm -hmm. because the things people are taught inside the industry oftentimes don't lend themselves to doing well at Rex. Is there a website that people can go on? Rexchange.com, Rex then change.com. Right, and, and what do they see there? They see a bunch of homes that are listed. They see, in fact, we've only been up for a year. We list, uh, launched our website in November. Mm -hmm. We already have 100 homes that we either have listed or sold in our backlog. So Every price the, range? Uh, yeah, from 400000 to a, we sold a $42 million home uh, in January. Um, so all price ranges and um, right Some now- Some guy bought a $42 million home on the internet? Mm -hmm. Now actually they go visit the home. So we actually right. send someone out to open <laughs> okay. the door. Right. We always send someone out to open the door to show yeah. people around. There's some things we still do with personal interaction, which, which mm -hmm. we can't avoid. But most of what an agent can do can be done digitally and better digitally. Do most of the people you hired, they have a set idea of what the real estate industry is. Does it take time to get them away from that? Exactly. Yeah, you know, exactly right. You gotta right. drive a C3, C, uh, a D Mercedes or whatever they drive all the time. Well, doesn't that give you a sense that maybe someone's getting overpaid in the real estate business when all showing up with these fancy cars and fancy clothes and making tons of money when they're just really basically selling a house? They're right? putting up signs is what they're doing. They're putting up signs, but should you pay, let's say on a $750,000 house here in the Burbank area, should you be paying $50,000 for that? So every viewer who's watching this show right now, their net worth just went up by hundred to two hundred thousand dollars because you probably sell or buy four homes the course of your life. We're saving you about thirty to fifty thousand dollars per home, so everyone's net worth just went up by a quarter of a million dollars. So when they go on your website, what do they see? They see homes listed, and if they want to list their home, they just type in their address. We send someone out to introduce themselves to the home seller. They take beautiful pictures of the home after we prepare it for a uh, photo session, and then we start driving tons of traffic to the home through. Facebook, Google, Instagram, Snapchat, Waze, Zillow, Trulia. And then we also throw out ads and we target people hit those ads and people like them. And we drive people to that website for that home and they can schedule a home tour right on the website. You don't need to call an agent to schedule a tour. You schedule it right on the website to go see the home. Yeah, where do you think you'll be 10 years from now? Well, we just launched in San Diego um, last week. Uh, we're going to the East Coast uh, next year. So I suspect we'll be in every state in the union and a nationwide company. And it's all buying, right? No renting? Uh, all buying and selling. Mm -hmm. um, so most people come to sell their home and we target people who like to buy that home, mm -hmm. not using the MLS, not using agents, but just using um, digital technology to identify them. So we can, we can attach a, a physical address to an IP address. So we think that if you live in this home that you're a good buyer of this other home, we can drop an ad right in your computer to oh. let, them, let you know about that home. How do you target them? Um, we can target them because- I live, mean, how do you know who to target? Uh, well, if they live within 10 miles of the home and they're on Google saying three bedroom, three bath home, we pop up an ad against that search or any search engine. Mm -hmm. If they're on Facebook and we think that because they're demographic and the things they're interested in, they want to buy a home, we drop an ad right in the middle of their Facebook page. If they're on Waze driving around that village, we can pop an ad right up on their ways or their Google Maps screen, and we drive them. Right. And then, then when they come to the website, we can see what topics they have the most interest in. So if they click on the drop-down bar for the school, 
the ad that follows them says, great home, great school. So you're the guy who does that. Yeah, I'm the guy who does that. <laughs> and we can, we can target very, very effectively. If, if you hit, spend 20 seconds in the kitchen, we can say, great home, great kitchen. Right. And then after we sell one home, we have like 5,000 people in this remarketing group. We get a second home in Thousand Oaks, for instance. We turn on that remarketing group of people who care about five, you know, three bedroom, three bath homes in Thousand Oaks. And we have 5,000 buyers immediately for that home. We keep building up this remarketing pool. So every time we get a home, we get more and more data and through artificial intelligence and augmented intelligence, we get better and better data about who's the buyer for this home. You're watching Business Rockstars. Jack Ryan's our guest, the CEO and co-founder of Rex. I'll tell you what that is more about later. I'm Pat O'Brien, see you in a minute. Welcome back to Business Rockstars. I'm Pat O'Brien. Our rock star today is Jack Ryan. Most Irishmen are rock stars, right? I think so. The CEO of Rex, that's Real Estate Exchange. So, um, so you've combined technology and real estate. Right. But in a way that you can zero in on people, mm -hmm. technology actually helps, right? Helps a lot because you can target who is the best buyer for this home, not just put it out on, on some website and hope people come to see it. Mm -hmm. You can actually target the people who you think are likely buyers for the home and drop ads, whether they're on Google or Facebook on Waze or um, just by we know their physical physical address, we know their IP address, so we drop an ad on their computer. Is this more successful than like putting signs up home this way? You know what's so funny about that? So of course we do that because some people want us to do it, but actually the better way to do that is not just put four signs up around the intersections that surround that home, right. but put the ad up on Waze or Google Maps. So when you're driving around within a mile of that home, we can pop an ad up on your uh, maps on your in your car. So you're you, the guy. I'm the guy. And then if you get, if, <laughs> and then. That's a great idea. And then if you want to see the home, you just click on that little tiny ad and we'll give you directions to that home. Um, and if you want more information, we can put it right on your, um, on your phone. So the technology part of this was really genius, right? On your part? Incredibly genius on my part. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, uh, the, amount is, of way, the, the amount of time and ways you can reach people is... Unbelievable. And then if you're, you know, we're, going about, we're about to list a $50 million home in Malibu. And the likely buyer for that home is probably 50% chance they're in Europe or China or Russia. We can identify the homes that are worth $10 million or more across the globe and drop ads on those homes across the globe. So if you're in Shanghai or in your Moscow, we can identify that you're a possible buyer of this home and drop an ad right on that physical address. And then we've partnered with Le Legend Pictures to uh, create a beautiful, a fully immersive video of the home. And you give you the, the headset and you walk through the home in Moscow and you can see the ceiling, you can see the roof, you can see the waves coming 360, in. 360, yeah. Yes, totally. Yeah. Um, so a uh, much better way to locate people people who are likely buyers for a $55 million home in Malibu. How do they find you? One is word of mouth, that's what works really well. Number two is most people spend 15 months uh, before they decide to sell the home thinking about selling their home. They're on the mm -hmm. web typing, how do I sell my home? How do I find an agent? Right. What's my home worth? We have like 300 word matches up against those searches, so we drop an ad on that search. And then if we miss you then, after you list your home, if it hasn't sold for a couple months, we can target you and drop an ad once again at your home saying, hey, your home's not selling, maybe you should go directly to the consumer and by the way, since we charge 80% less, you can pass that savings on to the buyer and make your home more attractive. So 80% less, you usually can save somebody 25 to 50, 60 grand. Yeah, right? like the average home here in, in Southern California goes for around 500, $600,000. So that's, you know, 25, $30,000 we're saving people. And that's after tax dollars, by right. the way, because they don't tax that first amount of appreciation. Now, do all your people have to be licensed? Yeah. The people who are in the home talking about them have to be licensed, but we don't have licensed real estate agents to do effective marketing of homes, or um, in some states, like in Texas, you don't have, a, have to have a licensed right. person inside the home to talk about the home. Do you go by your gut a lot on how to target people? I mean, Almost never. Mm -hmm. So what agents do is they go, the traditional agent goes with their intuition. We go with data. So let's say we're list, listing a home in Dana Point. It's our first home. The traditional agent will say, I think this, I think this home buyer comes from Southern Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. But we throw out that, that, those ads, we can say, no, they're coming from Temecula, 
so we can tell through data where the buyer is coming from, not through our intuition, and we follow that data to target other people who look like that person. So it's almost never intuition, it's almost always data that drives our decision using artificial intelligence right. and augmented intelligence. You gotta start somewhere, so your first guess is intuition, you throw up an ad in a certain area, but after that it's all data. But like if they're, let's say, from Temecula, mm -hmm. um, you probably know that they wanna get out of that track housing, mm -hmm. whatever it is up there, mm -hmm. that they all look alike. Mm -hmm. So do you know all that data? We have, ton we have data about when they bought the home, what that home is worth. Um, we have data about what kind of person lives inside that home. We have tremendous amounts of data on people. Um, when you hire people, how do you know they can do it? Well, I think like most companies were pretty good at doing it. <laughs> I once it. asked of uh, these guys that jump off cliffs. Yeah. And no water. Mm -hmm. and they have to wait till the water's deep enough. Mm -hmm. I once asked the world champion, I said, the first time you did this, how'd you know you could do this? <laughs> Otherwise you'd be dead. But how do you, how do you find people? Well, I mean, do you tap into real estate agencies, or you go to no? Because a lot of what we're doing is digital marketing, so it's right. not high the traditional agents. So we All go right, to so what are the different question. What are the three traits they need? There are two traits they need to work for you. They got to be really good at what they do. So for, for us on the digital marketing side, they have to have some history of done, doing that really well somewhere else. And they got to fit in with our team. They've got to have a great culture, a great cultural fit with us, so that we can get along with them and enjoy their company. Since we spend most of our waking hours with them, we got to make sure we can enjoy their company and they can enjoy our company. When's the next boom coming? Or do you never know? The next real estate boom? Yeah. We're in a boom right now. Um, so I think the question is when we raise interest rates, will prices subside? I don't think these booms ever stop out here, right? Southern California, I don't, do you? Not too much. You know, 2007, 2009 got pretty dicey uh, for a lot of people who owned homes and tried to sell them in that market. Right. But now it's back to the valuations we had prior to the crisis in 2007, 2008. And who are your buyers? Are they millennials? Are they older people, retired? You know, I usually, we thought, this is one of the things we were wrong about, but, um, and the data showed how we could do a better job. We thought the, the first sellers would be millennials because they're used to doing everything on the web. They won't talk right. to anybody unless exactly. they're, it's a loved one, right? Mm -hmm. it turned out our best uh, target for sellers initially was people who'd done it once before because they knew that you know paying five or six percent to sell my home is is crazy based upon you know what happened when I sold my home. Right. So, so it's, it's amazing. No, not many people think about that fee. Well, they kind of think they have to pay it, right? Because that's the, the yeah, price. Yeah, I, I never thought about it. Yeah, but it's, it's a huge amount of money. So if that million dollar home you bought in 1971, if it, the price hasn't changed, that's fifty thousand dollars. Now let's say it's worth five million dollars today. That's a quarter of a million dollars you're paying to sell your home. So we'd save you a couple hundred thousand dollars in the sale of that home, and we do it faster, and we do it with better results. What's the uh, hang time from the time? they contact you to the time that you sell their house? It's probably, by the way, we track everything, as you might guess, with data. And so our days on market are about a third less than the traditional agent and 99% mm -hmm. of list price. So we do better as a percent of list price and better in terms of speed to closing. And there's a lot of things we do to speed, to speed up the process. Like no need, if you want to see a home, no need to call a buy side agent who calls a sell side agent who right, calls you right. to see if you're free, gets back to the sell side agent, gets back to the buy side agent, gets back to the possible buyer, you just go to the website and there's a calendar and you click on the time and date you want to go and we send someone out to open the home for you. It happens that fast. So there's a lot of things we do that just speed up the time to closing. Uh, what if I type in Google uh, uh, anything with the word home in it? Do you see it then? Uh, Looking for a home, wish I had a home. If you're within 12 miles of the home that we're selling, you'll see the, the homes that we're selling. Really? Yeah. If you're with uh, outside that area, then you, you got to mention it also in your search something, some town that's close to the home, town that we're selling at home. Mm -hmm. If I said that correctly? Some, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. I got it. Okay. Uh, how long did it take you to start this? Took me about a get year, year yeah. and, and a half to get it going, and I did it with all of my own uh, resources, and then I started getting investors about uh, six months ago. And most of the investors are current and former CEOs of the Fortune uh, 100, and then also some prominent um, public servants. What's a day like at your office? What's your day like? My day is, is uh, making sure that we're heading the right way strategically, number one. Uh, number two, making sure we're developing good relationships with our vendors and our investors right. and our partners, and then making sure that in terms of the details of the business is going in the right way. So I, I learned this idea from a guy named Ken Yance, who's the former CEO of Cybron. He said, kind of swim across the surface of the ocean, just checking to see what's beneath you. When you see a problem, dive deep, and then go back up after you solve that problem. And so you're constantly kind of skimming the surface of the ocean when you're not visiting people externally to make sure that nothing is going amiss. And then dive deep if you have to. And hope there's no sharks there. Hope there's no sharks biting you. All right, Jack, All right, thank, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much Jack Ryan from Real Estate Exchange. Let me say that again so I get his name right. Change your name to Bob for the moment, okay? Bob Ryan? <laughs> Jack's so easy, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Jack Thank you. Ryan. Thank you. Nice to have you. I'm Pat O'Brien. This is Business Rockstars. We'll see you next time.